Now in the workshop this week, you're going to be undertaking your own um, design challenge where you're going to be creating a solution to a problem. Now the first activity is to, essentially it's part of the um, investigatory phase and defining phase, where you're going to learn about the properties and construction processes involved in bridge building. So we're going to do this through a simulation where you're going to use a bridge designer software. So you need to download and install that and come up with a range of different bridge designs. Um, so look at the example designs and then try to create your own design solutions to the challenges involved in the bridge designer. Now the bridge designer software is fairly complex, but you can do nice simple bridge designs quite easily. And you can then simulate your bridge with a little animated truck that will drive over it. And the really useful part of it is that it will show the compression and expansion of the girders that you place for your bridge. And if there is too much stress where they're being pulled apart or compressed too much, they will break and the truck will plummet to its doom. And you'll be able to see where in your bridge design the breakage points are. Because in your second challenge, you're going to be constructing your own bridge. So it's important first do the uh, bridge simulation before your tutorial so that you can discuss what you've learnt and the concepts involved in making bridges with your tutor and with your peers in your workshop group. So when you are in your workshop, you're going to actually be building your own bridge. Now on campus students will be using paddle pop sticks and hot glue guns. Um, students online will be using spaghetti and hot glue guns. And your bridges must be freestanding, which means you can't glue or attach your bridges to tables and so forth. They have to be able to be moved around. Now, you are to try to have your bridge span a one meter gap. Now that can be challenging because as your bridge is built and constructed, it will tend to sag, which will shorten your bridge. So make sure you have enough overhang so that your bridge doesn't fall down into the gap. Now, then you're going to test your bridge. So there will be various ways of testing depending upon which group you're in, but there'll be weights applied to your bridge to see how much weight it can withstand before it collapses. Now you need to be careful as part of that, so have your bridge down relatively low so it doesn't uh, drop a particular distance and don't have your feet or hands under the bridge um, when it's likely to collapse. But that's normally the exciting aspect of this task with your students. They build their bridges and then they test them to where they, what we call testing to destruction. Now, some of the shoot groups will be using some equipment that will test them so that they're not destroyed. But half the fun of these activities is often testing them to destruction. So part of this, though, is going to be using the things that you learnt about bridge design and construction from the simulation um, bridge building activity. And then you'll be um, applying those concepts for your own construction of your bridge and then testing it and seeing what you learnt about that process that you'll discuss in the workshops.